Good morning and welcome to Bridgewater Church Online. Thanks for spending some screen time with us. You are joining us in our current series, Heart for the House. As we begin today, we invite you to participate with us for worship in whatever space you're in. Let's pray. God, thank you for this day. Lord, we lift our praises to you because you are good to us. And Father, as we have turned the corner into November, may you meet us right where we are to help us learn how we can truly have a heart for your house during this season. Meet us where we are today, God. We love you. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, Bridgewater family. It's Pastor Drew. This is a season of generosity and joy here at Bridgewater Church. As we begin to think about Thanksgiving and all the blessings that God has given to us, we wanna challenge you to be a part of something special. It's called All In, All Give. Here at BWC, we know that God has been generous to us in so many ways. And we're asking you to pray about giving an extra gift beyond your tithe. We're asking you to give in such a way that we can express our love and our gratitude for all that God has done for us, especially in the season we've experienced together. So on Sunday, November 22nd, we're going to ask you to give this special offering. If you're at home, you can give online. Just make an extra gift in how you give now. If you're here in church during one of our two services, we'll have a special time to give and we'll be praying that God will advance the ministry of Bridgewater Church. All in all give is a pivotal moment this year in the life of our church and we need everyone to participate. And maybe you, you don't tithe on a regular basis. That's okay. This is a start. This is a beginning. So please pray about that. I'm so excited. God is going to use this gift, all that we do during this month, to bring about revival. I believe that with all my heart. So all in, all give. November 22nd, it's going to be a day that changes our lives.
Good morning, BWC. I'm so glad that you're joining us for this incredible time of sharing in God's Word together. And I have to admit, I can't believe it's November. It, it's going to be Thanksgiving soon. And I was thinking about two of my favorite cartoon characters, Charlie Brown and Snoopy. There's this beautiful clip that Charles Schultz wrote. It's Thanksgiving Day and the aroma of roast turkey fills the air. And Snoopy is waiting for Charlie Brown to come out of the house and give him his Thanksgiving meal. And he was so looking forward to turkey. He smells it, he thinks to himself, it's Thanksgiving Day, Snoopy says to himself, everybody eats turkey on Thanksgiving. The door opens, there's a sense of anticipation. Charlie Brown comes out, puts the bowl down, and it's dog food. He walks away and Snoopy thinks, dog food? You mean on Thanksgiving Day? I have to eat dog food? There's a pause. And then Snoopy thinks this. Well, it could be worse. I could be the turkey. I hope that brought a smile to your face. Because when I think about Thanksgiving, I think about the unique ways we celebrate together. For, for my tribe... We'll get together, we will share in some wonderful football, we'll have some great stories, and there will be turkey, mashed potatoes and gravy, there's going to be stuffing, and there's going to be pie. What a great day of sharing but I can't help but think that this Thanksgiving, in fact, this entire holiday season, is probably going to be different. In, in fact, two words that come to mind are hard and hopeful. I think it's going to be hard because we will have to be careful how we gather together. We're still living in this pandemic Perhaps there will even be some people missing around the table. It's going to be hard. But I also think it's going to be hopeful. We are getting closer to a new year, and we're all hoping and praying that it means the pandemic will end, hopefully, in the future, the near future. But I also am hopeful about something else. I'm hopeful that this just might be the season where wired in to all that we've been experiencing, there is a divine DNA for revival. I was doing some reading and in June, Pastor Michael Youssef wrote these words. For all Bible-believing Christians, the COVID-19 pandemic demands that we re-examine our priorities and learn the lessons God wants to teach us through this trial. This crisis has sent shockwaves through governments, economies, families, and countless lives. But this crisis did not catch God by surprise. He is using this trial to get the attention of every human being on the planet, including all of us as Christians, are we listening to what God is saying to us? Isn't that a great question? Are we listening to what God is saying to us? And that's why I've decided to begin a new series today called Heart for the House. I believe that God wants us to develop a heart for his house, the local church, and for the kingdom of God in such a way that we are truly preparing for and we are asking God for revival. 
The pandemic we're living through contains a, contains a, a logical bent for all of us to be guarded, fearful, inconsistent, and perhaps even selfish. On one hand, we have to continue to live our lives in the best way that we can. We must also, though, live in a way that pleases God. Can God use a pandemic to revive the heart of God's people? So over the next four weeks, I want to dive into four passages of Scripture that God empowered the Apostle Paul to write to the church at Philippi. We know the letter as the letter to the Philippians. Paul knew that God would want to help empower his people because we're constantly in a barrage of warfare spiritually, inwardly, and outwardly. Paul instructed these Christians to do four things, pray together, praise together, participate together, and provide together. And that's really what is gonna make up the core of the teaching in this new series called Heart for the House. But I wanna challenge you this morning. I wanna challenge you to begin to open your heart and mind not to the difficulties and the problems that the pandemic has created. Instead, let's prepare over the next four weeks for revival. Yeah, I know it's an old term. Maybe you don't hear it very often, but I believe that God wants to revive our hearts. He wants to revive the local church. He wants to anoint the ministry of Bridgewater. And God wants to transform the world with his love and grace. So we're going to dig in. And the very first decision that we have to choose to make is to pray together. To have a heart for God's house, to prepare for revival, it's all going to begin with prayer. And in Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 through 5, the Apostle Paul said this, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. If we're going to learn to pray together in a way that God can bless us with a heart for his house, then we have to understand that prayer grows best in a heart of gratitude. Now, I had a wonderful opportunity, oh, it's been a couple of months ago. I found a little nook. It, it, it's called Smith Gardens. It's right inside of the Dayton city limits. And I walked and I prayed in this beautiful garden. It, it's just gorgeous. I don't know why. It took me 10 years to find this prayer oasis. But I spent a couple of hours there reflecting and praying. But it didn't take long before I was reminded that someone worked hard to plant the seeds, tend the weeds, and continue to feed the flowers and all the vegetation. Well, this morning, think of prayer like a garden that God wants to grow. And the garden of prayer grows best in a heart of gratitude. Did you hear how Paul wrote? He said, every time I think of you, every time I pray for you, I have gratitude that just, it swells up in joy. Specifically, Paul is using the word kononia. It's a word that maybe is best translated with the word fellowship, but it literally has four components. Mutual connection, intimate communion, open communication, and generous contribution. Now, now listen, here's what Paul is saying. 
He said, every time that I think of you Philippian Christians, my heart is full of joy and gratitude when I pray for you. Because we've shared so much together in God's fellowship. To develop a heart for God's house, we need to be united together. And listen, prayer does that. Prayer grows in a heart of gratitude and we become a beautiful garden for God. But I have to admit, this has been a weird season. Hasn't it been weird for you? As I've talked with friends, we've all agreed that COVID has caused all of us to act in odd ways. Can I give you my top five? I've tried to put these together in a way that maybe will make us smile, but also make us think. I call them my weird COVID moments. The what's in your wallet problem. I've always carried cash. I've tried to pay with cash, but now the only thing people take out of my hand is a credit card. And even that is confusing. Some people take it, and some people won't touch it. Which also brings me to weird COVID moment number two. I call it the Mary Magdalene mistake. Don't touch me. You remember when Jesus said to Mary after he was resurrected, he said, don't touch me. She fell at the hem of his garment. Who would have ever thought we would have Mary Magdalene mistakes don't touch me. Is it elbows? Is it, is it handshakes? No, it's not a handshake. Uh, it, it's, it's just the knuckle bump. What about the Lone Ranger effect? Mask or no mask? How many times have you forgotten your mask when you got out of your car and you started to walk in somewhere and you're like, I don't have my mask? The public cough catastrophe? I love this one. Have you been in line with anybody yet? They start to cough, and you admit it, immediately think, COVID, they've got COVID. Then of course, there are the people who still never wear a mask, and when they're sick, they go out in public. It, it makes no sense. And here's my favorite, the grocery store gamble. I call them COVID contradictions. Do you know people who will go to the grocery store but then they won't go do other things because they're afraid that they might be around somebody with COVID. But where do most of the COVID germs probably exist? Well, maybe in the grocery store. A lot of contradictions in this season. Did you know there's a solution to the dilemma? When things are most confusing when we're struggling to get a handle on what's going on, we need to pray with gratitude for one another. This is how we remember that we're connected to each other. This is how we get beyond all the weird contradictions. We have to really get our prayer list in front of us and have a heart for the people that we love and a heart for God's house. Prayer grows when we are grateful. In fact, Paul's gratitude abundantly flowed like a river to God. As he was seeking God, he said to the Philippians, when I remember you, and I love this, all of you, regardless who it is, when your face comes to mind, I am grateful and my love for God's, God's house, God's people, God's kingdom grows. Here's our first challenge. If we're going to prepare for revival and have a heart for God's house, listen church. We can't get so divided. We can't be so disconnected that we forget we need each other. Gratitude plants the seeds in God's garden of prayer that grows beautifully even in the middle of a pandemic. All right, well, let's, let's go. Can I add one more verse? It's really one that, it's a go-to for me. Philippians 1, 6, Paul goes on to say, being confident of this, 
that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. All right, the very first decision we have to make is to pray together and to do that, to develop this heart for God's house, prayer must be watered with courageous faith. Paul's talking about a good work. When he talks about it, what he's actually saying is, don't forget, if you know Jesus, you've been transformed. In fact, we're in a process of salvation that continually brings transformation. How transformed do you feel lately with all the junk you've been walking through? Are you anxious? Have you been fearful? Are you just apathetic? Have you gotten tired of this whole mess? Wait, wait, wait. We've got to pray and ask God to water our lives with courageous faith. And here's why. The term good work literally means that we are confident and persuaded that no matter what is going on around us, God is working for his glory in us and through us. Just, listen, listen. Paul said to the Philippians, we're partners in this together. The pandemic wants to isolate us. It wants to make us think we're on our own and it's true that we're becoming more comfortable with patterns in our lives that don't water our spiritual walk with God courageously. Bruce Wilkinson, wonderful pastor, wrote these words. The truth is, Christians who have experienced deep pruning don't focus on what is left behind anyway. They're given to courageous, hope-filled, forward, straining, Prayers, they're given to courageous, hope-filled, forward, straining prayers. Oh, come on, church. Friends, listen. Now more than ever, God needs us to be courageous followers of Jesus. COVID has drained our courage to walk boldly for Christ. But don't forget we, we aren't slaves of a pandemic. We are servants. We are friends of Jesus Christ. God wants to, to get down to the root of our problems. This is a tough one. But have you realized that the pandemic is really exposing some of our deepest fears and anxieties? Have you realized that there are some things that God is watching in us that he wants to prune out? He wants to weed those things out of our lives? I was standing a couple of months ago in line at the Mexican restaurant locally when takeout was just starting again. It was Cinco de Mayo. Who in the world ever thought that I should be in a line on Cinco de Mayo. It was just in the beginning. People were trying to figure out, people had masks on, people didn't have masks on, people were separated, people weren't separated. I stood in line for my order one hour when I heard these words. The manager comes out and says, the computer is crashed. If you ordered online, we don't have your orders. I was frustrated. I was hungry. But what I watched broke my heart. 
I watched people start yelling and screaming at the manager. I watched people begin to get in each other's face. I watched people walk away in despair. I watched people mob the manager to get their food anyway. Listen, listen, church. It's beautiful that we're figuring out ways to show compassion to one another during the crisis. But don't forget, God is wanting to do a work of transformation in us, and prayer must be watered with courageous faith. We've got to remember how important the local church is. We have to remember how important the body of Christ is. We have to remember that we're better together than we are alone. We need each other to water this courageous work of transformation by faith. To develop a heart for God's house, we've got to begin to choose to leave behind the struggles of our past, even this pandemic. We can't give in to mediocrity and the status quo. Together we have to courageously water the gardens of our lives and be a church that prays. Prayer must be watered with courageous faith, Paul says, because God is doing a good work in us. Let's not stifle it. Let's believe by faith. And then he writes this. It's right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart. And whether I'm in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. Okay. We've got to pray for revival. We need to go deep in our affection and have a heart for God's house, His church. To do that, prayer must be fertilized with shared grace. I think this is one of the coolest things that the Apostle Paul has ever written about. There's nothing more empowering than to know we're all on the same page and we're all pulling in the same direction. Momentum grows when we realize that we're better together than we are alone. This is why Paul writes, I feel this way about you. But, well, how did he feel? Joyful? He wasn't with them when he was writing, but he still felt joyful and empowered because... They had all united together in their hearts. They shared in God's grace together. Here's what he means. The word to share, literally in the Greek, the best word would be to, to use the word partake. It means we're grafted together. Now I want you to think about this. If there's one thing that COVID has done, this pandemic has, has actually separated us physically. In fact, think about this question. Who are you doing life with during COVID? Are you making good, consistent decisions to be with people who encourage you, who love you, who empower you? Now, I, I have to admit, at first, when the pandemic hit, I never thought that by this time in November, we would still be in, this, in the shape we're in. Uh, you might look at me and say, Pastor, you should have known better. Pandemics take a while. I guess I was more hopeful. But here's what has, has really hit me. Never in my entire adult life has anybody ever told me that I couldn't fellowship with the body of Christ the way we did pre-COVID. And I have to tell you, I'm sad. I'm sad about it. In fact, not only am I sad, I'm concerned. I'm glad that we found ways to connect like this online. And, and it's good for people who need the safety of their homes. But can I, can I lovingly just say this to you? I miss you. I miss all of you. 
we're all kind of figuring out different ways to go different places. But I, I have to just say, I miss all of us in church together. And I know why. Paul's helped me understand it. It's because for 10 years I've shared grace with you. You've shared your grace with me. And now, now, the problem is we're, we're separated. And I get being cautious during COVID. I get it. But I'm troubled that even as the pandemic lifts and people are going to do all other things in their lives, please hear me. Please, please lovingly understand. Nothing can take the place of us being together in God's house. Physically sharing together. I know we can't hug, and I know we're wearing masks, but prayer, the kind of prayer that brings revival, it's fertilized with shared grace. That's how God's garden grows. I can remember I... My first trip to India, I went to Mumbai. I always think of it this way. I thought I was going to die in Mumbai. I really did. We got in a taxi with people we didn't know. The friend I was with went and got a taxi that he shouldn't have gone and gotten because we were supposed to take the approved taxi. And in the line, he ended up getting a taxi that was parked over in the dark separated, and we got to Mumbai at like three o'clock in the morning. My friend Don said, I got us a taxi. I said, well, Don, don't forget, we were told you're supposed to get a taxi in the line. Oh, it'll be fine, I got a taxi over here. Walked us all the way over in the dark. Before they ever got us to the hotel, and that ride to the hotel, I found out later, should have taken 10 minutes. It took 45 minutes. And before we ever got out of the car, the guy said to us, in perfect English, he said, that will be $30 a piece in American. Well, I had only gotten about $70 cashed out in the airport. Well, it was a shakedown. I looked at Don. Don looked at me. I said, I think your life is worth $30. He said, Drew, I think yours is too. We paid the man and got out. Again, later on, I found out that ride should have only cost us one dollar each in American money. It cost us 60. Listen, I called Kay on the phone. I was never happier to hear her voice. And by the time I got home, the homecoming was so sweet. And that had only been two weeks. You know what I realized? I can't do life by myself. God created me to be part of the community called the church, the body of Christ. And that's why more than ever, I am so grateful for all of you, but I miss you. I miss you. Because prayer that changes me and changes the world, it has to be fertilized with shared grace. And that leads to this last insight. Paul gives us Philippians 1, 9 through 11. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. If we're gonna have a heart for the house, and we're going to see revival come out of the worst season we've experienced in decades. Prayer will be fruitful when we choose to seek God 
together. This is so awesome. Let, let me tell you what the Apostle Paul is saying. He said, Philippian Christians, when you have a heart for God's house, God's kingdom, and we're united together, through prayer, through joint unified prayer, there is a greater power. I call it the multiplication effect. It's not one plus one equals two. It's one times one. It's, it's this incredible power that is harnessed together. And Paul said, the fruitfulness of prayer unified by God's people brings about, are you ready for this? Knowledge, we couldn't have any other way. Discernment, we couldn't have any other way. Wisdom, we could not have any other way than united together. Listen, listen. Regardless of the fact that the pandemic is a disease, the enemy of our souls wants to use the pandemic to divide God's church, to kill God's kingdom, to kill off God's people, and to make us think that we can do life on our own. That is a lie from the pit of hell. We need each other. And when we pray together, there is a fruitfulness in God's kingdom, and there is there is an abundance of God's blessing that we can't get any other way. Prayer will be fruitful when we seek God together in prayer. When I was just a boy, I think I was 10, I got to take my first trip to Disney World. I, I've been there several times since. We stayed with relatives I had never met, in a home in Florida that was, really you would call it impoverished. But they were so glad to have us there in their house. They had a heart for us and we had a heart for their house. And as a boy, <laughs> I walked out into the backyard. Now remember, I'm a city kid. And they had a grapefruit tree and an orange tree. I looked at my parents and I said, what are these? My, my mom looked at me and said, honey, this is where we get grapefruits and oranges. I can remember at nine or 10 years old, I said, they grow like this on a tree? I'll never forget what my mom said. When the trees are taken care of, they do. When the trees are fertilized, when they're tended, and my my relative said, Drew, honey, you're going to have fresh orange juice from this tree. We're going to eat the fruit of God's abundance. Listen, don't miss this. Prayer is fruitful in ways we couldn't imagine or dream. Like the, my eyes got this big around. That's what it's like when we pray together and have a heart for God's house, and ask God for the fruit of his blessing. Henry Blackaby said this, all revival begins and continues in the prayer meeting. Some have also called the prayer the great fruit of revival. In times of revival, thousands may be found on their knees for hours, lifting up their heartfelt cries with thanksgiving to heaven. Oh, come on. Prayer will be fruitful when we seek God together. And here's what Paul said to the Philippians. I know that I can't be with you physically, but we've got to pray in unity. We have to ask God for revival. I, I have a challenge for all of us today. I know that there are those of us that will be together on Sundays. And I encourage you, I encourage you, if you're getting out and going other places, I love you, but I encourage you because just, can I just tell you how much again can I tell you I miss you 
so much. If you can come to church at one of the services, 9.30 or 11, please come. We, we're safe. It's okay to be together. We are COVID cautious, but there is power when we're together in God's house. But if you can't come, you're not out of mind. You may be out of sight, but you're not out of mind. We love you. We need to be united together in this. And I, I have a challenge I think is going to be incredible. I'm asking, starting today at noon, Sunday at noon, until Monday at noon, I'd like us to have a BWC day to pray. I'm asking all of us that call this their church home, to unite together and to unite with believers around the world. And here are the things I'm asking for us to pray for. COVID-19 healing. The U.S. elections. Reaching friends and family for Christ even during COVID. Especially during the pandemic. BWC family unity and health. BWC vision and budget for 2021. Your family and your requests matter. And I'm asking us to pray for revival. Now, if you, if you don't see this slide until later in the week, that's fine. You choose a 24-hour period to pray. In fact, if you're listening to this on Sunday morning, just know, listen carefully to the announcements we're giving because pastors throughout the day Today on Sunday and again on Monday until noon, we will have times that you can join us on Facebook to pray. Prayer can't be a thing we believe in if prayer is not something we partake in. Shared grace together. BWC day to pray. <sighs> Do you have a heart for God's house? Do you have a heart for BWC? Do you miss us? Do you miss being us together? I miss you and I love you. Things, things are different, but I believe this, that in the midst of great struggle and difficulty, God can take a pandemic and turn it into revival. If we will pray together and ask God to give us a heart for his house. All right, get your hands out. Let's, let's start our prayer time right now. Father, we need you. We can't let the pandemic get the best of us. We can't let the pandemic change the truth that we need each other and we need to be together. We need the church. We need the body of Christ. Father, help us to make good decisions that please you. Help us to decide that we're better together than we are alone. And I'm thankful for all of the ways that we've been able to share online. But God, nothing can take the place of being united together and that's why we're going to unite in prayer jesus hear our cries give us revival send us new people to the bridgewater family help us to see people's lives changed may there be more baptisms and salvation in the coming 12 months than we've ever seen holy spirit of god break through our apathy and our fears and Father, help us to unite together and be reminded that Jesus, you paid the highest price that we could have abundant life. God, we unite in prayer together. God, help us to be agents of transformation. And God, be pleased, we pray. Give us a heart for your house. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Amen. Stay with us for incredible and important announcements for worship.
don't forget, I love you. I'm praying for you constantly. And I know that God has a plan greater than this pandemic. And until I see you soon, take heart and be transformed. Good morning, BWC family. My name is Tyler, and we are so glad you decided to join us for part of your weekend. We've got some announcements to share with you today, so here's this week's Bridgewater Buzz. The season of giving is right around the corner, and BWC wants to both be a blessing to others, as well as give you the chance to help us bless families this Christmas season. From now until December 6th, we're hosting our Giving Tree Outreach to help bless families in need this year at Christmas. Please stop by the Giving Tree display in the lobby or contact the church office to learn more about how you can help. 
Let's come together during this season and be a blessing to others. BWC, mark your calendars now for our All In All Give Sunday coming up on November 22nd. Your generosity and financial commitment through 2020 have been a blessing to our pastors, our staff, and many members who've been in need this year. As we approach All In All Give, please pray about a financial gift you can share above and beyond your normal giving so we can continue to be good stewards of all God has given us. Let's take this day to unite together, both in person and on giving online, and watch God use BWC to impact His kingdom. Mark your calendars for Christmas Eve at Bridgewater Church. We're hosting two identical services on this special evening at 5 and 6.30. We can't wait to join with you and celebrate the birth of Christ on this special night. We'll see you there. We love celebrating growth in our BWC family. And one of the special ways that we get to do this is through child dedication. Parents, you have been entrusted with the precious gift of your children, and we are humbled to get to partner with you in the journey. Child dedication is a special celebration of the commitment to raise our kids in the things that are of God. And we will be offering an opportunity for this in our services on Sunday morning, December 6th. Please email Pastor Liz at liz at bwch.org to let her know you're interested in participating. This fall is shaping up to be a great season for us all, and we hope you can take full advantage of everything we have going on at Bridgewater. And don't forget to like and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for weekly updates. Sharing our posts will also help us reach our community. That's all we have for you today. Have a blessed day, Bridgewater.